2018 from Lucknow. Let me introduce today's guest, Dr. Rakesh Yadav. He is a Professor Cardiology Ames Hospital from New Delhi and he is Executive Member of CSI2. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Sir, uh, how to overcome the fear of uh, clinicians from the peripheries in terms of usage of thrombolysis in the current scenario? And it's a very clear in the literature that thrombolytic therapy saves about 40 patients per 1,000 patients if you give thrombolysis therapy. It's a very useful therapy in a patient of STEMI. Uh, unfortunately, the fear in periphery in a small hospital is too much regarding giving the thrombolysis. And um, I always request everybody that don't fear to give thrombolysis. It saves lives more than it's a, the, the small risk of bleeding. Uh, the confusion of thrombolysis is that uh, it's a costly thing. No, uh, the streptokinase, which is the first thrombolytic therapy, is costing no more than 1,000 rupees in the periphery. Second important thing that if you give a thrombolysis, there is a very huge complication rates. Uh, believe it, the major complications in all the thrombolytic trials are not more than 2%. And 2% is a very small uh, complications as you see the benefit. The, uh, the, the, the most dreadful compli complications is uh, intracerebral bleed, which is about 0.5% only. In, it means in 200 patients, only one will have an intracranial bleed, and that too in a high risk patients, the patient who's a diabetic, the patient who is older age. Third important thing, they all think that if you give thrombolysis, this patient cannot be referred for PCI. It's not true. Now there's a lot of new trials which has come, which has suggested that even you thrombolyze patients, they can have angioplasty after three to six hours of thrombolysis without any extra complication. Fourth important thing in fear is just do a thrombolysis and send patient to the, uh, to the referral hospital or a hospital which is capable to PCI. One thing you should always understand, if you can transfer patient in a well-equipped ambulance, then you should transfer it. But if you don't, if you have no facility of well-equipped ambulance, transferring patient 200 kilometers after giving PCI may have harm to that patient. So manage those patients. The thrombolysis itself saves lives. Manage those patients in your periphery. Stabilize them. Give appropriate therapy in a form of aspirin, clopidogrel, heparin, statins, beta blocker is required. Give therapy. Observe those patients who become pain-free after thrombolysis, who are hemodynamically stable after thrombolysis. They behave well, and then when the patient is stabilized, then refer those patients to the higher center. But yes, if patient is having ongoing chest pain, patient develop complication of thrombolysis at the periphery, try to shift those patients to those hospitals which are equipped with prime to PCI. And uh, again, the, the fear of thrombolysis is that if you have given these patients clopidogrel, aspirin outside, you cannot thrombolyze these patients because it will increase the bleeding risk. Now the, the data, the research is very clear that in those patients also you can give thrombolysis and the benefit of thrombolysis will be huge if you give thrombolysis in these patients. And mind it, in acute MI, the time is the most important thing. If revascularization is done within six hours of onset of symptom, the patient benefit most. But if you go beyond six hours, the benefit is not too high. So if the, the basic purpose is, if you give thrombolysis in the periphery, you will cut down the time of shifting of the patient from the periphery to the hospital, which is well-equipped hospital. And if this time is more than two hours, three hours, you are losing the time. So rather, thrombolize these patients. If you have a mini CCU there, facility of monitoring, defibrillation only is required to give thrombolysis. No high-end equipment is required to give thrombolysis. You can even give in your mini ICU, which can be very well established in a remote area. So the basic, basic, basic thing in acute STMI management, if you have no facility of primary PCI, thrombolize all these patients. But before thrombolysis, you should know the contraindication of thrombolysis. And those contraindications are, if you have an intracerebral bleed, any time if you have an intracerebral bleed, don't give thrombolysis in those patients. If you have a ischemic infarct in the brain six months before, don't give. If you have an active bleeding, if you have an active bleeding sometime, if you have malignancy which is very proliferative, very hyper, 
uh, which has very high chance of bleeding, don't give thrombolysis. Rest, if your blood pressure is high, you can give thrombolysis. Rest, all our minor bleeding complications are relative complications. They are not absolute contraindications. So this is a very limited absolute contraindication of thrombolysis. So no need to have having a fear of... No, no, no need of having the fear. Right. So what should be the ideal post-thrombolysis care yes, very, very of the staining? Not even in the, the periphery, sir, but even having a small... Yes, center. when you are giving thrombolysis, you have to have certain guidelines. You have to maintain in your hospital. First, please examine those patients properly. Please see that there is no contraindication for thrombolysis. Take a good venous assess. Always keep those patients on monitoring because if you give thrombolysis, there can be reperfusion arrhythmia, which can be fatal. So patients should be on monitor. Patients should be in a CCU. Patients should be on the bed and give thrombolysis with a large excess vein. Monitor the bleeding complications. Means just ask patient, you are not developing pain abdomen severe. You are not having altered sensorium or severe headache during the thrombolysis. If you are developing severe headache or you have developing hematomasis, hemoptosis, look for urine color. It is not red color. You are not having hematuria. So see for bleeding complications when you are giving thrombolysis. Monitor blood pressure, especially when you are giving streptokinase regularly. Don't leave the patient. Give thrombolysis and don't... Monitor BP. Initially, we all say monitor, if you have an intra-arterial BP monitoring, it will be good. Otherwise, monitor BP every five minutes when you are thrombolyzing the patients. And after thrombolysis, give heparin to all these patients for 48 hours. You have to load this patient before thrombolysis even with aspirin and clopidogrel. Then other th the adjuvant therapy with thrombolysis should be continued after completing the thrombolysis. And when you have completed the thrombolysis, look that patient actually has settled down, his symptoms has improved or not. It means you are giving a successful thrombolysis or not. Thank you so much for sharing your views on the platform of STEM India 2018. Sir. Thank Thanks you. Thank you.